All right, apologies for the technical difficulties there, but uh, it's not just the World Athletics page that is getting uh, that is going down uh, because of an overflow of traffic. Uh, so we were with Noah Lyles, and he tells you that uh, you didn't know I make music, and then all of a sudden we have to explain ourselves. Yeah. So, so he says he goes into his bag. He's like, "Well, I got something for you." And at this point, we get really excited. Chris, is like, I'm already engaged. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, we had a conversation with him indoors about watches, and mm. so in our head, we thought he was about to break out three Omega watches because that's how we operate i guess like we're yeah. eight-year-olds on christmas like we think presents that happens to me all the time like my friends up. just give me four thousand dollar watches out of the goodness of their no heart yeah. or it was gonna be like he would show the medals off to us and like tell us to eat our words or whatever instead we got a bluetooth speaker on the table and i was, I was like, so confused we're gonna listen gonna to next. my music so you can hear it finally Going and for the we go, like, baby. He's like, I got three I want you to listen to. And I was like, whoa, Noah. Again, this is like the beginning oh, of the conversation. Oh, so it's more than just that song. Yeah. Yes. It's more so than he's going to have us listen to three songs. I was like, Noah, we, we got 15, 15 minutes. minutes. Like the yeah. best, your people were telling us not a minute over. How long are these songs? My single, my single is dropping, is dropping. <laughs> yeah. So instead of the Noah Lyles listener party, listening party, we... We did do an interview. You can check it out in our show. We'll break it out uh, soon enough as its own video and then as an episode of the podcast itself. But, um, you know, fantastic chat there. Uh, but then after the interview concluded, the 15, our 15 minutes were up. Like the press lady was telling yeah, us, uh, like, wrap it up, wrap it up. And uh, instead he just <laughs> keeps talking to us and then starts playing his music and then – you know, for a couple minutes, we're just sitting there <laughs> jamming out, jamming out. Actually, pretty good. And uh, event eventually, someone has to make the move to get up. <laughs> so we take a photo and then and then we leave. But um, it, he also it, ran a race later that night. I so know. Was then when he the I was like, <laughs> we know him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we know that guy. I would love to hear him at some point. Yeah. So Noah, send him over because I know you're going to listen to this. He's been. He said something about like copyright issues that he's working through on that stuff, but. Um, the Grammy will have to wait. Um, the Christian. interesting part was that he's, he's got he had a hat on the you know two time champion, but now that's got to get updated. Yeah, we oh. and we might keeping the embroiderers the busy. Dude, yeah. the dude's got three gold medals. I mean, this one with a help, a uh, little help from his friends. This, yeah, you know, and Christian Coleman does what Christian Coleman does. It always shocks me how quick that first leg is over. Man, it's. Honestly, it's one of the shorter legs of all of them. But overall, I mean, who better to have as your first leg than someone like Christian Coleman? That's a cheat code. Yeah, he's like a bullet out of a gun and just immediately takes mm -hmm. off. Um, then the handoff to Fred. Pretty smooth, smooth. right? Yeah, smooth enough. Second leg was kind of fun yeah. to watch. I mean, we had Seville on that leg. Mm -hmm. We had Curly. We also Marcel had Marcel Jake. Jacobs. Yeah. Like, that was we'll, a fun leg. We'll have to look at the splits, which, I mean, four by one splits oh, are like shit. What does that <laughs> possibly mean? I, I, from my perspective, from, from kind of far away, I thought Seville had ran the fastest of Fred, him, yeah. and Jacobs. Yeah. Um, yeah so he was leg was moving. insane. Yeah, he was out of there. But then... It gets it's scary. It gets really scary and shaky. And when they, when I watched the replay that they showed in the stadium, I was like, I hope no one's protesting this because this looks <laughs> yeah. pretty rough. And uh, it was... It was in Fred the zone. Curly. It just wasn't yeah. smooth. Fred Curley to Brandon Carnes. And then from there, you know, Brandon Carnes runs his leg. And that part is fine. The handoff to Noel Isles was also a little bit shaky, but... No one was going to catch Noah Lyles in that Oof. final stretch. It's, yeah. uh, the irony is that, like, you know, this whole season we've been talking about, oh, Noah, like, can he get out? Can he get out? Can he get out? He got out too well in the last exchange, and that's why they were, like, an inch away from being out of the zone. And, like, Noah, sorry, your acceleration's gotten too good. <laughs> like, that was the biggest problem with that last exchange. He may have also just got a little too excited and may have taken off. I mean, he – He's fast. So <laughs> those steps may have needed to get a little bit adjusted and probably brought in a little bit more because he is so fast and in such great shape when it comes to Carnez bringing it into him. I probably would have shortened it because that man is fast and you want to make sure he can catch up to him. 
Yeah, I mean, once you miss the initial and then you both are doing the moving yeah. of the hands. That's where you need a Jenna Prandini who's going to grab that wrist and throw that baton in your hand. <laughs> Shove it up your ass. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Jeez, David. Oh, my God. I, I haven't had to edit anything out of this podcast because it makes my life so much easier at the end of the night. And, and maybe we just got our first edit. That was fine. So then Noah comes across. He's celebrating. Awesome celebration. And Italy's celebrating too, and I'm like, wait, we won, right? Like we <laughs> we were first. <laughs> well, Dave, I mean, especially for Jacobs, like he's had a friggin' year of it, you know, and like uh, uh, that's got to be yeah a good redemption for him. And and frankly, I mean, for, for <laughs> Italy, picture, if you only saw this picture, you're like, who won? Yeah. Like, how like, great is that for Italy, though? I mean, if you were to tell me that, I think my prediction was. USA, Jamaica, Italy, to be honest. But they they had a team together. They showed that in their prelim because they don't really have a semifinal. They showed that they have a very strong team, and that's huge for Italy. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be – this ultimately makes the Olympics a lot more interesting. You have Jamaica out for blood, Italy, the Olympic champions. They want to take it back at some point. And the U.S. is just so stacked. Yeah, I mean, it's a great event. Uh, I feel like the dynamic of the team element, but still being sprint and just there's so many variables, like as Jasmine has enlightened us to of how it could be run and how even leading up to the very moment of the race actually happening, we still don't know the order. It it's, took so long. I was really sitting there refreshing the thing like, why haven't they posted the women yet? And then Chris sent the message, and I was like, oh, it's up, finally. <laughs> like, it takes so long for them to put it in. And I'm, no, and I need to do that the day before. Since the theme of uh, the podcast this week has been, you know, the haters and the doubters, it's worth saying, you know, obviously we don't have to get back into, like, the long litany of issues that the, the U.S. men's 4 by one has had. But, you know, silver last year, gold this year. Clearly they're, you know, they're not far from perfect, but they're working it out and – Speaking of somebody whose haters and doubters are going to be real quiet after this world championships, Shakari Richardson. Mm -hmm. I mean, she came here making her first team finally, officially, I should say, officially making her first team with three medals. Like, yeah. dude, how you should be so proud of yourself. I think the day, the haters are it's time for them to just shut up and enjoy her show support her i mean as we can see when it comes to that jamaican shikari because it's not even jamaica american rivalry because i think we kind of celebrate each other the only time we have those rivalries is in the relay but we still celebrate each other i think that should be dead now there yeah. should be no more oh shikari versus jamaica no they've shown that they have great sportsmanship together they're in this together they're supporting they're happy for each other I, we've saw it in the 200 when Shakari walks over to Sharika. We saw it in the 100 when Shelly and Sharika walk over to Shakari. It's beautiful to see. Yeah. I mean, last night, too, during the press conference, uh, you know, Shakari was fair, fairly clear that um, there's no ill will or anything like that between her and Sharika. They hugged at the finish line and, and you know, afterwards a bunch of times. So, yeah. Uh, and any question about the U.S. teammates not getting along, they were all hugging yeah. and celebrating together. But the best celebration was oh, oh, man. the tackle heard around the world. Yeah, I this, was calling the Team USA medical staff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Carrie's still going at like 10 second 100 base through the turn and she runs into Christian Coleman. I think he must have played football back in the day. Cause, yeah. I yeah. Mean, that was a beautiful tackle. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the way just the baton flew out of her hands after the tackle was just, I'm going to watch that clip on, on replay for, for the next couple of days. So U.S. 8 by 100 world champions. I love you that love for us. You love to see it. Love to see it. We I, talked I, a lot, lot of people probably don't like it, but I love it. Yeah. <laughs> we talked a lot the other night about, you know, the Jamaicans having a night, you know, when everything's on, it's on. They're so good. That that happens a little more frequently with the U.S. just because we have such a <laughs> wide range of events. But no, but it's worth saying tonight, you know, we got gold in the relay, gold in the relay, gold in the shot put, bronze in the pole vault. Like this was a great night for Team USA. It was also a great night for Canada. We can probably talk about that during the field event report. But yeah. does, does anyone have any last thoughts on the 
The four by one? Uh, let's just knock out the relays real quick. Oh, God. Oh, we're going to go Let's to go the, the four, four by four. four. Yeah. So men's one great. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Are we starting with men or are we going to yeah, start we'll with start the men? men? Okay. So the men, because it's, uh, I guess, a bit more clear and straightforward. Uh, the men's four by four, Team USA, men's 258. And my favorite part of this whole thing was Trevor Bassett handing off to Matt Bowling and then just like waving him <laughs> off and saying goodbye. Um, Trevor, I think this is the first time uh, he was he was telling us, the first time he's ever let. Oh, yeah. When he <laughs> got the call to be part of this relay, he. He was like, sure, this sounds great, but just so you know, I have never let off a 4 by 4 in my career. And he did a great job today, so kudos to our boy. He was, like, talking himself out of, like, you, you got the spot. Just shut up, Trevor. They don't need to know that. Like, <laughs> just go do it. Yeah. Like, I, I feel it's, like that. It's good that he did tell them, though, because that's stuff that relay coaches do need to know. But honestly, you're, he's a great 400 runner. He does the four hurdles. He's so talented that why wouldn't they trust him? I feel like it makes sense. And then right behind them. This is just, the story. This, this is this is the story. This is the good for the sport story of the night. It's Team India finishing in second in 259, setting an Asian, Nash, uh, an Asian continental record. Yeah. Uh, and... I mean, they were fully on the U.S. ass for much yeah. of this. And I'm uh, like, we've we've harped on this so long with why Niraj Chopra being good is so good for the sport. Mm -hmm. India, a huge nation of like a billion people, the largest of, nation in the world, they passed China. Diehard yeah. sports fans, like India, loves sports, and you see it on every tweet and Instagram post celebrating India's success in this four by four and setting that record. Like we need. India to be good at track. It is great for the sport to get a country of that enthusiasm involved in finals, let alone, and it's going to happen. I'm just saying it's going to happen. India will get to the point where they're winning medals with way more regularity because when Chopra won, there was a huge surge of investment in athletics across the entire country, and we're, we're seeing it pay off. Uh, did we ever get that post out to on Instagram for the Indian? Or we one team? Uh, we will. Okay. Uh, I don't know if we I, have. We, we, the guys are still cooking yeah. through the photos. The, the, you know, beauty and struggle of these these final days is that so much is happening all at once that our our total rock star MVP photographers are. <laughs> you're gonna say you're so our social media manager. <laughs> oh yeah, that guy. Uh, I mean, he's kind of an asshole, but like aside from that, he's pretty good at his job. No, I. It's not me, by the way. There's for you know peek behind the curtain for uh you know folks that don't know like we're literally have have our you know live text going the whole time and it's it's literally like don't give away our strategy well yeah just <laughs> us we being use like text messages you know <laughs> to communicate. johnny like mondo's vaulting now jc lee's up next like sprint across the track with your 70 pounds of camera and like get them both one after another johnny zing and justin Britton are our secret weapons. dude have you guys held their cameras for an extended period of time. Johnny has like eight cameras around his neck at all times. I <laughs> have, posture is worse than Chris. I held one yeah. camera for all of like 10 minutes and my arms were just like broke. So I got to put this down. I can't even do that. Exactly. <laughs> Stretch your back. <laughs> <laughs> Chiropractor's <laughs> gonna kill him. <laughs> Dr. J. Heller, please do not watch this. I need an appointment ASAP. Um, wow, free, free plug for the chiropractor. <laughs> he, no free plug. Wow. He's, he's a huge track and field fan. Um, yeah, so shout out Dr. J. Heller. Um, all right, in the second heat, it was Jamaica. So we're, we're set up for a U.S. versus Jamaica showdown. Um, in the final, but you know, you've also got France in it, Team GB. Um, it's USA versus Jamaica. I mean, who are we swapping in there? Rye, Rye. I would love to see Rye on there. And you get it, then you have, you have two, you get two subs. Quincy, yeah. you have Vernon. <sighs> wow, I might put on Vernon off the bronze medalist. Then Ah, it just I guess it how depends much did he on celebrate? how they feel. How yeah. much did he celebrate? It depends who's, on who's which healthy. one of them yeah. feels the freshest and feels like they're most recovered. And hopefully they're honest with that answer and not just thinking about a medal. Yeah. <laughs> and you get you but get medals if you're on the great. prelim, right? Yes. Because I was going to say one of the 
So I don't need medals to give out. I don't super know. I think I just like missed the boat. Not that like I didn't know who he was, but I just I don't follow Matt Bowling super closely. And apparently this is a thing that like everyone hates on him. He's going to leave the oh, knock on wood, but like he's likely to leave this competition, this championship with two medals yeah. as like a sophomore in college. No, you know? I, think, like, I think he's more than a sophomore. He's whatever. Like 400, yeah. This is the future. Dude, yeah. that, if you haven't heard of that man, that man is a. I'd heard of him. I hadn't heard legend. of like the the controversy. Uh, like, or like, oh. I didn't know that people like hated on him. Like, well, I was if just you're like. really good when you're young. Yeah. You're going to have natural. people hate on you. That's yeah. what If I you're mean. anything less than Arianne. That like, is <laughs> someone who that like has people that probably prey on his downfall of like, oh, he's not going to make it too far. He was hot while he was in high school. He's going to be burned out. But I think he's proving everyone wrong that he's been maintaining so he's like the nicest kid in the entire world it's so weird <laughs> i was talking to them after because they, they had a lot of discussion about what level of swag and like what they should wear headbands armbands like what type of uniform and they're they couldn't agree so they just did not <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of debate they had to all match they're like we gotta yeah. wait so do they have to go down to the arm season stuff like that i know the uniforms no, they have to match but like no i don't think they do oh i would have oh, been like they... do what y'all want to do this isn't like, like high school he wants to wear a headband Everyone but they has. have so many uniforms it's nuts I think they got to make up for it in the final and just wear everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To get to the bad news. Yeah, the bad news Oof. here is that the women's 4x4 four four team got DQ'd, which is kind of a massive I... bummer because it's the first time since 2005 that How? this happens. And then in addition to that, we're sitting at 27 medals. Second place is – second most is 11 by Jamaica – we're number one with eleven golds. Canada second. Chris, Chris's. I'm very upset. Relationship with, with the medal table is so complicated because he says he doesn't care, yet he checks it constantly. <laughs> <laughs> so which is it? Do you care? Or do you not? Care? I will. I, I do care, and <laughs> it's. I, I almost shot an email to the World Athletics like press people today because they sent over like a just a rundown of the schedule for tomorrow for closing ceremonies. Like they're gonna hand off a baton to the. Japanese team and you know the final medal ceremony and in it I was like reading really closely I'm like but where's the team presentation and like last year we played yeah I was you gonna, know, are they doing that again are they doesn't telling seem points? like they are but that might have been just a on home soil like we're gonna brag on people thing but mm -hmm. so I say all this is because we, we need five medals tomorrow to tie 33 um, we're sitting at 27 oh yeah math is hard my my brain is mush, uh, so we need six medals. And this the, is this yeah. event just showed how brutal the sport is because mm -hmm. Alexis had such an amazing and just the team had such an amazing mixed gender relay to start things off, mm -hmm. and then disaster, disaster struck. I feel really bad, but also at the same time, for me, I know it's been a while since I've run on a four by four. But I'm a little confused as to how they allowed that to happen. So what we're not talking about and addressing specifically <laughs> is the fact that USA had a handoff outside of the exchange zone and then got disqualified. And that's the last we're going to mention it. And I will, I, the one I think I will say is, and I'm sure there's significant <laughs> American bias just, here, but I do like, there is a part of me, you know, again, the rules are the rules, whatever, but you do feel like on some level you're like, you feel like there should be a way to protest and just be like, come on. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, I let, feel like that's, let, that's what the made argument. the 4x4 four four so good, like, though. Uh, I mean, you know, you have to have something because if you just let them pass it off anywhere, then it's not you're not really running the race, right, within that exchange zone. But I just – <sighs> I'm trying not to like be the bad person, but dude, don't be I just the bad person. positive vibes only at city's max. <laughs> so I will no, say, no, I just don't get it though. I, I think that that is a lack of discipline. <gasps> and <gasps> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, but it, it is, it really is. It's a lack of discipline. Um, with those ladies, unfortunately, which why it's so disappointing is because we haven't seen that from our four by four in so long. Most of those ladies on that four by four have ran on the four by four plenty of times. Um, I think I'm also just a little heartbroken because I was ready to see Shamir back on the track. Yeah. <laughs> when you think about the 
potential of the four by four and this team at the start of the year and then this being the finish. It's just I think that's it's the hardest hurt. part. But we're gonna come back. It's okay. But I'm just saying, you know, when you think about the potential of Sydney and a thing, a thing. thing and Britain and Delilah and Talitha, like there were so many potential pieces that could fit in. So many potential 48 O splits <laughs> out of like so many different women. And we didn't get it this year, but everyone's coming back. We've got the potential that world record going down. And we'll be fine. I will say, like, there's sort of the double edged sword, right? Of, you know, not in some ways you're like, in a way, it's not, it's a, it's a silver lining that folks like Britain and Sydney weren't running it anyways because, you know, they're, they're hurt or they're out or whatever. So it's not like we're missing that opportunity because we didn't have it in the first place. The other thing I would I don't al- think it would have happened with them. Oop. Spin anyways. zone. The other thing I would also say is that for other teams, like, uh, like the Great Britain team looked fantastic. The Jamaica team looked fantastic. I have to imagine that's not the way you want to take down the USA in the four by four. Like you want to beat them head to head in the final, like the having the, <laughs> I don't think they're going to care. <laughs> I think if they win the gold I mean, medal, they're, they're going to be, fine. They're they're be like, happy well, either way. We're, we're closer to gold. So it's fine. David, David is saying that <laughs> Ireland, I was fired up to Ireland got in without Rashida. Oh, oh. It, unfortunately just, I think it's been a long year. It's time. We've got to some shut stiffness somewhere, something. We're, she's not going to make I it into the I was talking to Caitlin about final. that. I, I truthfully think that it is time for the collegiates to go ahead and shut the season down. They've had such a phenomenal year, all of them, no matter how they did here at World Championships. It's time for them to get ready for Olympics. Go out there and get ready for the Olympic team if they're going. I think all of them are actually signed and pro now. So it's time for them to get ready for their first professional season. It's also just a bummer because we close out the meet with the women's four by four, and last year that provided, you know, the cherry on top for USA, and now that won't be the case. But this is all good news for the Netherlands. <laughs> I think that they're no. That's a, he's position. not wrong. Like Femke getting that redemption on that relay, you know, that would be, that would be because also it was. I mean, again, not to you know, yeah, harp on, clown on her, but like say. Alexis won. Mm-hmm. The mixed relay and she was part also of part of the botched exchange. You know, there's sort of an, an evening out um, if if the Netherlands kind of pops off in this. Femke, <laughs> oh, this them, someone had asked for an interview and Femke gave like the most apologetic, sweetest no I've ever heard in my life. Because she had done so many already and it was like at the very What end. is there left to ask her? And it was just like, how can you be mad at like yeah, she, she was, was like, she felt bad, but she had to go. She was like <laughs> She's like, don't do <laughs> go for it. She's like, don't do a Dutch me. accent, Chris. She, I swear to said, God. She said, tomorrow I'm free. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she she coming on the show. <laughs> well, all right. So then, that is the those are the four by fours. It's time for Jasmine to give us a field events report. Let's start with the start with men's pole vault, which was an electric factory. Dude, the men's pole vault was so fun to watch. Where is Mitch? I have Mitch's instruction of what to say out loud. Okay, go. I mean, are go you going to do the guess? accent? Don't play, <laughs> don't, don't play his voice note because well, it might be a little it, vulgar. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, it, well, I guess we should touch on Mondo first. Of since course. He actually won. Crikey, right? Crack for coaches. I mean, Mondo went out there. He ran awesome, it. I, he ran. He won in a 6'10". He went for a world record attempt. I think it was, what, 623? Oh, oh my gosh. I was sitting next to Jasmine, and I'm like, he's going to miss the first one, but he's going to get a fill for it. He'll clear, He'll probably clear it because now he's got a fill for that height. But if he doesn't clear it here at Worlds, be on the lookout for him to clear that at Prefontaine. Like, the man has a fill for that height. He's clearing it, just little technical things that he has to pick up. Like he was kind of hitting it with his arm on the way down. He hit it with his leg on the first attempt, not the first attempt, the second attempt. I'm excited to see him just go ahead and break his own world record. I had a new appreciation. I always appreciated the pole vault, but after talking today with Katie Moon and how detailed and technical she got with us, I felt a little bit like an expert watching um, but it was an amazing competition, like lots of personal bests, lots of people jumping really high. 
behind Mondo in second place was EJ Obiena from the Philippines, setting Two time medalist now. Yeah, amazing. Tying his Asian record in the in the pole vault with a six meter jump. Dude, his body awareness was very nice to watch. I don't know, like he comes That's down. That's a nice compliment. Jack. He <laughs> comes down so different from everybody. I don't know. It's like he just tightens up when he's coming down, and I'm like. Like a diver. You're very, yeah, like you're very aware of what you're doing as soon as you get over that pole. And then third Body place, uh, Chris Nielsen of the U.S. Yay. Jumping 595. And then the Australian, Curtis Marshall. We got another tie. We're two for two tying with Australia. And I pointed this out. I pointed this out to, to Kyle. I felt, I mean, you know, he's probably amped because he got a medal out of it. But Curtis Marshall... The miss that tied him with Nielsen versus not, you know, putting him over into the third place spot was his op- his first jump. It was opening height. And you're like, you know, he misses on opening height and then clears like, you know, four bars yeah. clean. And you're like, dang it. Like, if it was only <laughs> you just got the, the warm up jitters out a little earlier, you would have you would have had the clean bronze. The so notes from Mitch missed the final. Curtis missed the final in Eugene. No heighted in Tokyo. Tonight, he equaled his PB. It's his first major medal, though two Commonwealth game golds. Nina Kennedy is his training partner. And then the final note is that his coach will celebrate so hard you might find him in Madagascar by Monday. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank it. you, Mitch. Thank you, Mitch. Well deserved. <laughs> um, did they Should switch... The pole vault. Oh, this yeah. is a the the shot put was going on in the same spot as where the women vaulted yesterday. Versus yesterday, the triple jump was happening where the men vaulted today. So they did not have the the downhill runway that the, the great was telling part us about. about field events. You just get to move us around a little bit. <laughs> well, we heard the rumor. Deal. We heard a rumor, but I don't think we can share speculation. Oh, what if we just say it's fully speculation? Sure, allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly one athlete really likes vaulting in a certain direction. Ah, uh, can't imagine who it would I be. I can't imagine <laughs> who would have the clout who to decide where the most. would be able to dictate where they jump. <laughs> this is like big hand information. Yeah. <laughs> so we're not taking credit. Do not source <laughs> us. <laughs> Do not. And say I don't that even know what athlete us. it could have been. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out like who would world athlete. Who would World Athletics listen to? Um, like, who has that kind of clout, you know? Yeah, this is one of those tracks you never... I was just thinking about, like, how you can move them around. You never flip the track here. Never flip the track. Don't flip the track. <laughs> I will say... Think about the athletes. So, one thing we were talking about earlier, uh, I thought of it because on the, the live show earlier today, Joe Fonbele was talking about the the Gators factory of, of you know, world-class athletes over there. Um I want to. I want to know, and and if folks want to do a little research for me, where the universities are stacking up on the medal table right now. Obviously, Florida is definitely up there, but with Mondo and Shakari, don't LSU forget Arkansas. Is, yeah, there's uh, so <laughs> I want Arkansas. It's a good you know good week for the SEC. That's for sure. Yeah, let's <laughs> but, get uh, intern Owen on that. Yeah, yeah I'll be curious. We'll, we'll make cool a graphic table. or something about mm-hmm. uh, where where the different colleges are stacking up against other countries. Okay, next field event. Uh, shot put. Yeah, let's go women's shot put. Women's shot. Chase Illy finally, you know, figured it out. She went back into the lab and <laughs> we get to have a buy. We got a buy. We're taking four to 2025 Tokyo. So shout out to Chase. I, I sent a text in the group and I was like, Raven Saunders is probably so happy now. So <laughs> Not for- that it's an easy handout because our U.S. is the U.S. women throwers are absolutely stacked. phenomenally stacked like makes no sense she got out there through a 2043 for a season's best and then we had sarah mitten of canada canada is just out here Killing doing it. the dang thing they right now too. they had a great night um she had a season's best of 2008 and then we had um gong i mean if y'all don't know about gong man that is she's an olympic medalist she's a world medalist this girl is someone that a lot of the shot putters have one admired and cheered for and she's just one to look out for you just never know what she's gonna do like she's got so many medals Mm -hmm. i want to be like her when i grow up but she came out with a bronze 
not necessarily her best performance that she's had, but the fact that it's not her best and she's still coming out with a bronze, dude. I'm trying to be like her when I grow up. And before we move on from it, you know, I, I suspect that perhaps not every Sidious fan is as big a throws guy as we all are. Um, Ch- gal, that's a, a big throws guy is gender neutral. Inclusive. Yeah, gender inclusive. <laughs> throws guy. Um, <laughs> But Chase Ely was like on top of the world last year. She was, if she wasn't undefeated, she had like almost a clean card in all of 2022. World champ, US champ, just killed it from start to finish. And then this year was real rocky. Mm -hmm. There were some, frankly, like pretty trash throws in Diamond League meets. She only finished, she had the bye because she was the world champ, but she only finished fourth at USA's. Um, It was not... A, like a smooth sailing the way it was last year for her. It and, wasn't. And it's a great sign going into, you know, she doesn't have an Olympic gold, you know, being able to have that kind of up and down season and still put it together in the, in the championship. What matters season, most. That's a great sign. Cause, cause it's easy to be good when you're good. You know, that's the benefit of the buy, right? Like you can take things a little bit easier and really focus on the one championship at the end of the season. Absolutely. And Chase fortunately nailed that peak. All right, and then the final thing is the men's decathlon wrapped up today. Dude, Canada just came out on top one, two. What? I'm just, where where'd y'all come from? Here's the plage. <laughs> 8,909 points for a world lead. Then you got Damian Warner right behind him with 8,804 points. And then Lyndon Victor, who... You know, I remember a couple years back, like he was the next big deal. And it's like, I, it just so happens to be at a time when like there's so many young names um, that have come up within uh, the, the multis where, uh, you know, whether that's Leo, that's Kyle Garland, uh, Kevin Mayer, who unfortunately withdrew after uh, sometime during the first day. But this was an intense competition. Well, uh, the theme here is you either like set a personal best or you dropped out. Or you dropped, literally, or you <laughs> dropped out. I think it was what, nine men dropped out? Yeah, 15 out of 24 finished. Like, so it was just wow. like you either were crushing it or something went completely wrong. And this is kind of where when Shari was talking to the ladies and she even said for them, she was just happy that, hey, like we made it through. Like we're the ones that made it through this war getting to the eight. And I feel like those guys should be so proud of themselves no matter what, because you guys made it. I mean, you guys had to run a 15 at the end of that. So many guys dropped out. They were honestly dropping like flies, unfortunately, especially in day one. And so for them to get out and finish this event is absolutely insane. It was brutal. Yeah. And it's worth saying, he, so he's now number six on the all-time list. Um, but his teammate, Damian Warner, and Kevin Maher are ahead of him. So going into Paris, you know, three of the six best decathletes all-time, if they stay healthy, are going head-to-head. And that's going to be fun. That's crazy. All right. We've got two more finals to unpack. Jasmine, I think that does it for you. It does. I'm out of here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go. Thank you, um, Jasmine. Fake sleep. I'm going out tonight. Bye, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're subbing Jasmine out. We're bringing in our resident endurance expert, David McCarthy. Catch us up on some 5,000s and 800s. Uh, and I guess we should quit. I know we talked for two and a half hours today, but we did talk about the we marathon. We did watch the marathon this morning. Yeah. And we've got the men's marathon first thing tomorrow, tomorrow morning, morning yeah. which we'll do it again. Our watch party. We did have a number of Ethiopian fans in the chat. <laughs> oh, we're big in Ethiopia now. I, Furious. They might not love Mac. us, but they watch well, us. <laughs> I, I was out on the course and like I would have, I'd pull up our stream. Well, I was like walking around to see what you guys were talking about and to stay up on the races. And then all of a sudden I was in the chat and then it was just nothing but complaints <laughs> about like, show the action, show the action. <laughs> and it was, it was just because I guess like people who were in Ethiopia must have stumbled upon the links, shared it among uh, themselves. And uh, they don't know we're not rights holders. <laughs> Can you imagine the disappointment of thinking you're about to tune in to the end of the world championship <laughs> marathon as your country woman is winning the gold and all you get is us. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did a great job keeping we, it entertaining. Well, especially but. because there was a breakaway late in the race where it was 
all Ethiopian, Ethiopian women. Yeah. And and then at some point it said, I just send over, I don't know, Mac, did you use the video of the people on the treadmills outside? <laughs> no, though I sent in a video of people just outside running on treadmills next to the marathon course. And imagine that's what you get when you tune in instead of the actual race. David, Man. what was your impression this morning of the marathon? Um, yeah, so like it, the race started off slow. What did they go through? They went through halfway in 74 minutes. The whole pack was there. Um, the American girl, Susanna and uh, uh, Kira, Kira were, yeah. were, were up there. Um, then you just had the breakaway of the Ethiopians, um, all four, four Ethiopians in it. Yeah, there race. was four. Yeah, they they four. looked like they were going to go one, two, three, four yeah. for a bit. Um, and I think their reigning champ was one of the first to fall off it. Um, and yeah, there was then just another push on sort of about an hour 30 in and that just split up the field again, but they were hurting. They were hurting big time. And we saw even at the end, um, what's the Moroccan Amani girl's Bruce, name? Yeah. Oh, oh Gardati, Gardati, Gardati. Yeah. The, yeah. the happiest person in the yeah. entire world championships. <laughs> she was, she, she was the first Moroccan medalist in the women's marathon. So that's very exciting. Um, she ran, uh, I don't even remember what the 226 or 227 was her, her finish time, but she was in sixth place at 35 K and moved from six to third, just like so methodical running her race as other people who had kind of like sent it were falling off. She just picked them off one by one and she was hype. at the finish yeah. line. I think it just shows too, like it is hot out there. Um, and you could see the Ethiopians when they broke away, they were hurting, that like they were grimacing, but you could see, um, what's her name again, the Moroccan girl? Gardati. Gardati. You could see she was steady. She was smooth. She was steady. There was actually no, um, you know, pain in her face. Her rhythm was good and she just stuck to her plan and didn't respond to the others. And she got herself a world championship medal out of it. Morocco is a good place for heat training. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> As is Ethiopia. Yeah. Amani Barisa, who came into this one with the fastest PB of the field on paper, you know, Throws in some nasty surges there towards the end of the race and holds on to win 224. Mm -hmm. Takes down the reigning champion, uh, Gauditam Gebrselassie. And uh, yeah, so Ethiopia takes two of the three medals. Sal Lona Salpeter, who is just a force in these championship settings, and especially in races without pacemakers. We see what she's done in, in New York and uh, yeah, ends up in that rough fourth spot. So. Top American, Lindsey Flanagan, ninth place from A six, two twenty seven. Uh, I mean, fantastic race that you must take a ton of confidence from, especially when the Olympic trials are going to be held in hot conditions. Like this was good. Um, so, major kudos to Lindsey. Um, it was a rough one for our dear friend Kira Damato, um, who I spoke to afterwards and. Uh, she was dealing with some cramping and then a little bit of an issue like with her hip into her leg, um, considered dropping out, but knew that her kids were back at home watching and, uh, yeah, they got up in the middle of the night, uh, with, with, uh, I guess like her, her parents or her in-laws who were watching them and, uh, you know, she was like, yeah, you can't drop out for your kids. So Aww. she was a bit emotional there towards the end, uh. And, you know, hopefully, you know, she's taking the time to, to recover well. And we're actually going to have her on Cities Mag Live tomorrow. Oh, um, yeah. So that should be that should be exciting. So, um, David, if, knowing that the men have to race tomorrow, what do they take away from today? I just it's pacing. Um, tomorrow's supposedly the hottest day of the year. Really? Where, like ever? Know, yeah, no, like in 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 Budapest. Really? Yeah. Oh, you know, Great news so, for our six. Yeah. yeah. So we were we we're supposed to be running the ten k a six ten k afterwards. It's just gotten pulled back to six k because of heat warnings. So tomorrow's going to be hotter again. Um, it's just pacing. I think it's the same with all these um championship races. When you see the countries they've been in, the carnage that happens out there. Um, it's a patient game. I think it. You almost have to be annoyingly under control. Um well over halfway mark um, and just hope to come true because it's too risky. It's a, it's a risky gamble going out hard and then you blow up and yeah, it just, it goes nowhere. So I think, uh, you know, for, for the men's side, I think, uh, yeah, it's just, it's going to be tactics again and whoever's the most patient will, will come true. Speaking of patience. Yeah. You see Marco Arab. Yeah. Arab. I wrote. Arab, that, Arab, I wrote yeah. yeah. So we'll call we Marco were corrected tonight we were by, corrected our, by and some Canadian friends. Yeah. <laughs> so it's Arab. Yeah. And he's like, the nicest guy 
I yeah. The fact that we had been calling him A-Rop, I now I'm like, why didn't you just correct us? He's too nice. <laughs> Canadians notoriously <laughs> rude people. Yeah. So so uh, A-Rop. I believe Arab. so. Arab. Ma'am. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, we've got two Canadians in the room, <laughs> yeah. and now they're debating. So uh, we will get down to the bottom. Well, it's of different this. in French, so yeah. you know. <laughs> so I mean, coming into this year, like we were talking about the 800 as just like it was a snooze fest for so many of the Diamond Leagues, but it, it wasn't, you know, because of uh, the guys or the perform. Well, for a while, it was the performances where it's like nothing was really popping, and then after that, it was just sort of like there's no one guy that is like the person to beat and the guy who was fun to watch. But during these championships, Marco won me over. I think like he is that guy going into next year. And I'm just I, perfectly executed race. How do you remember it going down? I think he tricked us, right? Like- yeah. Complete opposite to last year. Um, <laughs> you know, last year he took the lead after 300 meters with 500 to go and he faded up the home straight. And today he actually stopped, he was actually tripping up after the first 150 because he was, he was running into the, the back heels of the second last person. I think for a guy like that, that tactic suits well. He's so strong and powerful that I think holding on to that power towards the end helps. He went really wide from 400 to 500. I wouldn't have done the pass there. I yeah. feel like I would have waited. That was really to wide. The turn. Yeah, they went through in 52, so I suppose it wasn't lightning fast. Um, Wanani, the 19-year-old, took it out. Like, you know, he didn't maybe do as well as he might have wanted in Eugene last year. I think maybe he was only 18 at the time, um, you know, experienced pressure. But, you know, he, he really came through, took it on, took the bull by the horns. Um, and he was challenged, you know, a, a Arab passed them, you know, down the back straight. He was challenged by the Bolivian, right? Uh, the, the Botswanan. Botswanan, sorry, Botswanan. Um, held his ground and, and, and held on for, for second, only 19 years of age. And then Ben Patterson comes through for third. Ben, so that was the first time uh, the UK have won a medal in the 800 since 1987. Peter Elliott. So uh, I, I saw someone else. I ta- I spoke to him and I asked him about it and he was like, it's amazing because we are good at the 800. Yeah. Yeah. Like the depth of the English right now, or I guess all of GB, is amazing in the eight. Mm-hmm. But I did see someone uh, like Team GB had tweeted saying like the first medalist since 1987. But you know earlier the year, Andy Murray had corrected some tennis journalist oh, yeah. because it was like best player and first first male medalist. Yeah, so, yeah. So right. it's like first male medalist because Laura Muir and Gemma Reed yeah, have, have yeah, one. Yeah, Keely, yeah. Keely was were Keely, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. eleven Sorry. months ago. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's you know it's almost like now you're seeing almost a resurgence of the uh, Great Britain glory days. Seb Coe, Steve Cram, Steve Ovette, the 800, 1500 meter. We have not seen that for a while. It's really moved for fifteen to five k. So, um, yeah, like it's cool to see, see them coming through. Obviously, still not maybe someone running in the 8 and 15, but now to see Josh win the 15, the middle distance is really uh, thriving in, the, in, in Great Britain right and now. Ben's only 21 years 21 old. 21 years of age. And yeah. when you think Max Bergen here had been a little beat up, but. Just like, that was my first impression when I saw the Team GB kit like cross the finish line. I said, oh, the Max Bergen in third? And it's like, no. Yeah, you <laughs> just assume because Max had been running so yeah. well. Um, so th- there's multiple really young, very fast Brits right now. And the the thing that really stood out for me for Ben was the fact that he went out with Wayne Oni, was sitting in second right in there, and then he got passed and swallowed up a little bit. And rather than panicking, he found a way to respond and, and run a strong home stretch, come in for third. So uh, a really, really exciting podium. Young crop of 800 guys. We've been saying it's wide open, it's wide mm-hmm. open. And you know, Marco is now making it seem... Less wide open because if anyone's been consistent this year, it's yeah. been him. He was so dominant there. Do then, you think? Do you think that, like at every year at the World Athletics annual meeting, Great Britain's like four by eight next year, <laughs> like four by eight at Worlds? Come on, like let's let's do it. Let's just do a four by eight. It'll be fine. Like anyone could win. Who knows? Well, maybe they should try and challenge whatever their national record is anyway. Yeah. Coming into this race, we talked a lot about the the sneaky Algerians and. Uh, they ended up fifth and sixth in this one, so not a good day for them. Some Those guys have such a good last hundred. Yeah, in the, the I was first rounds that I was not willing so nervous. To, to like celebrate a Marco victory. We were sitting next to a bunch of Canadians, so you know we already invested because we know Marco. He obviously has spent a lot of years training in the United States, and so we've seen him around. We're cheering for him, but. 
The Algerians had such good last yeah. hundreds that until he actually crossed the finish line. You, I Eugene wasn't last sad. year, Sajati ran twelve point nine for his last one hundred. That's crazy. Yeah, that's outrageous. And then yeah. uh, you know, shout out to our guy Bryce Hopple. Not not a good day for him. Ended up uh, in eighth place. He'll uh, be back. He'll be back. I mean, he's racking up championship experience. So, uh, and the only American uh, to make the final this time around. So, championships to forget for the the U.S. men's eight hundred crew. I think that you know there's going to be a lot of folks real hungry going into Paris. Like, you know who might be really hungry, and we it has not competed in a while. It's Mr. Donovan Brazier. I'm just like wondering like where he is this entire time. Like, if he's out there watching these races and just thinking, all right, I know what I got to do. It's tough. I don't know like how you guys feel, but. When you watch a race that you want it to be in, I I can see why just some people every race. (laughs) Why some people just choose not to even watch. It's like I'll check the results later. Fair pay to Jake Whiteman being out here. Yeah, to commentate the race that you want to be in. All right, let's move over to our final final of the day, Uh, the women's five thousand, which I got something to say about this. It (laughs) ends up being Faith Kipiegon's historic moment. Becoming the first woman to win both the 1500 and the 5K at the same world championships. And this one was just kind of served up on a silver platter. I don't know how you, sorry, I had to cut you off. I'm about to go off here. Like, I know it's hot, people are tired, whatever. How on earth do you let it get that <laughs> tactical for that long with Faith Kipiegin in the race? Even going into the final lap, there was moments where we were just like, where Insane. are they going? But she is the world record holder in the 5K. Yeah. But, so it's like everyone but just kind of can see She's the fastest in the fight. You know, you know that you're not. like If you're Gouda Sagay, if you're Safana San, you just know that you are not beating this woman in the final 200 meters of a race. Like, how, like you got to do something. They just, I like, I, I joked on Twitter. I was like, did they just decide before the race in the call room? Yeah. Well, I think tour, S- like, Suzanne, Suzanne looked like this championship. She was just kind of trying to get a sneaky medal in each event. You know, she was just sitting in and just trying to cover moves. That was her sixth race in eight days. Uh, uh, Teske, Tes- Teske, yeah. yeah. Like, she's com- the guy, yeah. yeah Teske, the guy. Like, she's coming back after winning the 10K. Right. So like, you know, everyone has ran hard, like coming into this, she was looking for the 10 K 5 K double and, and fate was looking for the 15 5 K double. So, but I like, you know, we were talking earlier before we came on it. She can't be beaten right now. You do run a, like she's run 1405. Yeah. So to David's point, like she had the world record holder. So what are you going to do? You're going to go out and run 1403 yeah. from the front. Like she's just going to sit in your <laughs> boy. You can't drop no. her. There's nothing. you She can ran, do. she ran 56 seconds for her last lap and 27 seconds for her last 200. So it's just like you sacrifice your own metal hopes in order to try to beat her in what is essentially an impossible task. We know she's feeling good. We know she's healthy. We just watched the 1500 a couple of days ago. Just go down in a blaze of glory there. Um, yeah, uh, I, I guess the most frustrating thing, I, I'm with you, uh, David Melly, about just how like Safan Hassan has just raced kind of frustratingly if you're rooting for her to win these races because she just leaves way too much room. And she Hassan, I mean, Hassan's got wheels too. He like, does. I don't, but it, like someone like uh, uh, Ejke Utai, who is the, the 5K road world record holder, she's somebody who has, has a history of pushing it from the front. She's like a real strength runner. I was just, I was just shocked that, that somebody with that kind of, you know, background and, and racing tools – just doesn't even try, you know, like it, I mean, uh, you know, again, it's all relative. You're not in the race, but it, it was, it was very surprising to me that, that they let it get so tactical. And, you know, I, I was my, that this was my pre-race pick for a, a Kenya sweep. Um, they got two medals out of it. Beatrice Chibet, uh was, was third uh, in bronze. Um, she's had, she's had quite the year. Yeah. It was a strong run. I, when I was like watching that final lap, I was like, she's in it too. Mm. Well, she, she was not somebody that we we really knew no. until last year, and she now has two world medals, a world cross country title, um, and she's pretty high up in the all time. So she's list. world junior champion in the five thousand. She's Commonwealth Games champion in the five thousand. She was world cross country champion this year, and she also won the Kenyan trials in fifteen hundred this year. Good year, pretty good year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just think for Sifan, the best case scenario was a gold in the ten and two silvers. Yeah. So yeah, we were yeah. saying, like, how how could you possibly beat Faith? 
You just wait. Oh, yeah. yeah. You just wait till yeah. one day. You just hold on. Yeah. You, jo- you are the yeah. steeple yeah. Well, you, you do it. Like, you do it. Savan does, and you maybe, move to the marathon. Maybe, maybe you do a thing like when we were talking about, you know, Jakob. Maybe you try and just annoy them in the race, <laughs> like you know, and put their rhythm off and stuff like that. But um, also, it's hot here. Like, so you're going to take it on, and like you know, it's it is it's tough. It's humid in the stadium at night. It's hot sitting there watching, let alone racing. You know. You know, it's tough sometimes when you like we had some interviews this week and you ask an athlete, like how to go, I just got beat by the better person. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when faith beats you, that's yeah. all you can say. Yeah. You don't really, you can't Not even have a better person, up. the best person. Yeah, like, yeah. You can't even, especially just, right now this year. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, why did faith be, it's faith give Diego. What do you mean? Why? Like what <laughs> could I possibly done different? Do you like, think part of it is that she's just so nice. You're like, you know what? I, I also want her to win. <laughs> you know? Faith could be a gun. Clear cut favorite. I think right now for, World Athletics Athlete of the Year on the women's side. Yeah, yeah. easily. Um, and then quick shout out, Elise Cranny, ninth place, uh, 1459. Strong way to kind of, you know, bounce back, even though like it was just super bunched up. I think this is, a, you know, maybe a B, B plus result for her. Alicia Monson struggled a bit and did fade, you know, back to, to 14th place, which is, you know, she'll probably be a little bit upset by that, you know, given the fact that her... No, this is the first time that she's doing the 5K at a, at a global championship, but she had 13 place finishes in the past in the 10K. Talking to them after they were saying, you know, look, like they're realistic. They're, yeah. not, they're not naive to this. They, the best case scenario in this sort of field might be like a fifth, a sixth. Like you legitimately are facing some of the best women of all time. This is probably the, the deepest women's 5,000 meters yeah, you know, it, or at least one of them in history. So they're like not even upset necessarily. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like you throw your hands up. And it's like I don't know. Like I, th- you have to really kind of focus on yourself and be like, what did I do? Yeah, did I prepare? Right. Especially after the ten, did I bounce back well? And then just take some solace in that. But the five is an event that American women we've we've obviously done well in the eight hundred. We've had some fifteen hundred medals. Mm-hmm. We've found a way to get some ten thousand medals. The five just seems to be that one event that the American women haven't cracked yet and it's just i don't know where you're supposed to find your way in that yeah. crack i feel especially like, with the like the depth of the kenyans and the 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 uh the ethiopians are and even like uganda's on the rise so i would like to see um some you know if the, let's say you know this sort of sim- something similar happens at trials next year i would i would love to see what someone like elise or alicia could run fresh you know i know i get you know, that that was sort of a, a long debated, you know, do you double, do you not double? But, uh, you know, just, I mean, selfishly, just as a fan, like I, I just would be so curious to know what that, what that last lap would look like if you're on totally fresh legs. You know? Well, we saw it in the 10K, yeah. you know, she, she ran amazing and she, she, she was there with the, with, with all the top runners leading into the last lap in the 10K. Um, so Elisa, I I think's best event is the 5,000 mm-hmm. and in Paris, 5,000 is first because I was asking, you know, what did you learn from this experience doubling? And both of them had said, and they also did a joint interview, which I always enjoy because you see the, like they're, they're obviously friends like that, you know, they've been racing each other for a long time and happy to do it with their American teammate. And they're working out together and answer questions. The questions are the same for both of them. The answers are also kind of the same for both of them, but it's like, well, why did you choose to double? And both of them basically coaches said yeah. <laughs> like good experience, like learning, take this uh, championship and bring it with you next year. But I do for at least specifically, cause I think Alicia like in due time will become a 10,000 meter runner and up. Like she will yes. definitely thrive. Elise is already talking about, I'm running 800. Hopefully this summer. She like, loves the 15. 15. She, was, she was very open earlier in the season. Like she's not a fan of the 10 K, you know? And, and, almost ran the 15 and the 5k at, at USA's. And I think when you think about who could potentially, you know, be a, a real threat to metal in the 5k on the U S side, it's going to be someone who can do what Elise did at USA's, you know, someone who can really close in that sub 60 kind of race in a, a tactical championship style race. And she has the tools to do it for sure. All right. I was, I was just one more thought. I mean, we we're talking to Kira McGee the other day who came mm-hmm. in fourth ran basically as good of a race as yeah. you could have ever hoped. And sometimes you just have to say, this is what I had mm. this championship. Other people were better. Still be proud of like the performance that you put out and just 
I don't go like you just got to train. Like, yeah, you go back to the drawing board and it, and and you know what? It's it's leveling them all up. They're all becoming better athletes because of the standard right now. But there is a time you just come away from race and like you just like right now you can't beat that person. And sometimes too we, we can come away and like athletes by nature everyone is competitive out there. Everyone wants to be better. Um, and you know if they haven't like you know. You're always going to be disappointed if you're forward. You're always going to be disappointed if you don't make a final. Um, you know, but sometimes too, like, it's just like there is a bit of luck in the day, um, you know, and everyone can't get lucky. And the standard right now is, is, is so big. And it's not about just coming away and, you know, tearing it apart and trying to look for so many reasons. It's just put the head down, get back to work and come back next year again. Tomorrow, the final day, we've, we've, we've made it across the finish line. Getting emotional <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> Uh, the finals we've got on tap, women's high jump. That's, Mitch is going to go crazy in that one. Um, the men's 5,000 meters, the men's javelin throw, the women's 800 meters. I feel like that one should be the final event of the whole championship, but I get we have to do relays. The women's 3,000 meter steeplechase, and then both the men's and women's 4x400 four meter relay. Finish with the women's 4x4. Four four. And we're not in it. Are we going to stay? <laughs> we just started scootering we're back. protesting we, we we meant to dq because come on <laughs> we just start the show tomorrow just right on time because we no, will obviously play. be there because femka said that's when the interview is that's happening. true that's true <laughs> yeah um all right we that got does. race tomorrow oh, yeah i don't want to think about it <laughs> I think, I but think. what time is it now it's almost 12 now we have to be up at six o'clock for the marathon yeah, yeah, I might scratch. Uh, I'm no. thinking about it. A6 got you shoes and a uniform and a <laughs> bib and a new shirt. It's only 6K. It's I, I see the course. They have it uh, amended online there, so we don't go over into... We're in Pest or are we in Buda? We're in Pest. 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 <laughs> right, so we, we're not going into Buda. It's it's literally down the straight road of the marathon where the start is. So straight down for 3K, back 3K, and shaded. Yeah, uh, look, we all... I was looking at group it's, run. It's 4K, it's 4K from here to the start line. Jog over, do the race, jog back. Good days, train. Go in, enjoy the evening of athletics. The, uh, <laughs> I like that yeah. attitude, Chris. You're in. Yeah, and I, I'm going. Oh, we're going to have it. We're going to have a We're going to have a beer in here tomorrow night. Yeah, we're going to have our first beer. Of- <laughs> 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 Finally, <laughs> I'll take an Ollie Pop. Yeah. All right, that does it for day eight of the World Athletics Championships. City of Smag, Champs Chats, post race show. Uh, I'm Chris Chavez, Kyle Merber, David Melly, David McCarthy, Jasmine Todd. Uh, you know, it, it's crazy. We haven't, Mac, you've been way too quiet throughout these whole entire championships. He doesn't have a mic on right now, but uh, Mac has just, you know, been crushing it behind the camera. So everyone uh, toss him some love in the in the YouTube chat. And toss ASIC some love. Toss ASIC some love. Buy all the ASIC products um, at ASICs.com. We will see you in six hours for <laughs> the marathon watch along. And then after that, we've got Sidious Mag live at 8, p- 8 a.m. Eastern time with uh, Danielle Williams, Kira D'Amato, Coach Tanja Buford Bailey, and I, I, we might be working and more. on more guests <laughs> and more. Um, yeah. Check your DMs, athletes. Check your DMs. <laughs> uh, or just show up and surprise us. I guess last thing is subscribe to the YouTube channel. We've had a massive surge in subscribers over the last week, um, and that's greatly appreciated. Not only does it keep you posted whenever we you know, release some of these athlete feature interviews, whenever we go live, uh, when we're dropping you know dozens and dozens of mix zone interview videos um so even if we're coming towards the end of the world championships you've got hours and hours of content for you to consume and we might take hours and hours of a break between uh this and the next track meet so uh we will rest but not yet because we still love track and field we still love track and field i think that's uh we just switch hats hat (laughs) new hat all right everyone Have a good night or a good afternoon back in America.